checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Our opener is in fact Nigel McGuinness versus Brian Danielson. If Brian Danielson has been cleared to compete. So Nigel comes down the aisle. A very short aisle in this building. I don't know if I've noticed that before. I did think it was funny that they literally did the ring introductions. Mm -hmm. Like the match was taking place. But in storyline, we didn't know if the match was taking place. Nobody knew this. We haven't seen him all day. Yes. If Danielson showed, is going to be here to wrestle? If, if Which is funny, because like if this were real, and you were running the show, and you didn't see Brian Danielson all day long, like why would you send Nigel out? Doesn't that kind of indicate he's not showing up here tonight? But they sent him out, and he did a promo. He did his promo. Well, first, he played Danielson's music. He did not come out. So then Nigel cut a promo on him. The American coward has dropped the ball. I want a 10 count. I want to be declared the winner. And Danielson should be stripped of his title. Then the final countdown hits. There's a new entrance video. And Danielson, it turns out, is not just there, but he brought his gear and put it on. In secret. Nobody knew. And more importantly, to me at least, the storyline now is officially in canon. Darby Allen is an idiot. Yeah, this idiot gave up his shot because a heel told him that Brian wouldn't be able to wrestle on the show. Yeah. And he believed him. And not only did Brian wrestle on the show before Darby faced another guy for his title shot, but he ran in and beat up the guy that beat up Darby after Darby lost his title shot. Yes. Yes. So. You know, this would have been a lot easier if Nigel would have just won that match at All In. It all would have made more sense just now. Just gotten his title shot. Oh, <laughs> it all would have made more sense now. Oh, well, such is life. So, the dumbest booking of the year has, has happened. It's done. We've explained why. No point dwelling on that. We may as well just enjoy the wrestling match. And the wrestling match between Ryan Danielson and Nigel McGuinness was excellent. It was very technical at times. Very physical. I uh, act physical constantly. Uh, ugly brawling at times. Nigel tried to tip the stairs over onto Danielson at one point. That's a new one. But he's working over the arm. Gets the London Dungeon a few times. And uh, when uh, Danielson hits the knee strike out of nowhere, he goes down clutching his bad arm. Can't follow through on that. They're trading strikes and kicks, and Danielson hits an elbow with a bad arm and cuts himself off with that one. Nigel gets the hammer and anvil elbows that Danielson likes to use. Hits the Tower of London, too. Gets the dungeon, including a very nasty version where he has the uh, feet hooked and cranking way back. Brian's able to escape that. Hits some elbows with his left arm, the good arm, and he collapses. So Nigel tries the knee strike, a move I'm sure he has never tried before and hopefully never try again. It was ugly. But fortunately, he was not supposed to hit anyway. It just pushed Danielson back into the ropes. Danielson tried Nigel's own seesaw move, but ran into a giant lariat. In a long battle for a label lock, Danielson finally got the win there. But he can't grab his hands because the one hand is so weak. Has to grab his own wrist. And then it comes to the ending, which is, to me, hysterical. Because I'm watching this in the West Coast. I'm watching the West Coast feeds. They've had time to censor things for family viewing. And there's a close-up of Nigel's mouth. I can very clearly read his lips as the sound changes drastically. As they edit in generic crowd noise instead. And he taps out as in the announcers are saying, He screamed, thank you! I promise you that's not what he screamed. He screamed something very different. So he did He did scream, fuck you. He screamed, fuck you, okay. and tapped out. All right. I mean, all of the announcers said he said thank you, so I, I believe them, which I don't know why he did, because they bleeped it. But anyway, I thought this match was was a very, very good wrestling match. I, I can't call it like a like a really great match or anything like that. No. It was, it was slow-paced, but, I mean, it was good. It was really good. Nigel McGuinness... I mean, this is his first singles match in like 15 years. And, you know, Danielson, in storyline, Danielson is all beat up and may may not have been cleared. In real life, dude's all beat up. So you had a real beat up guy and you had a guy who had to wrestle a singles match in 15 years. And I mean, if you look at it from that perspective, the match was incredible. As a as a match, just, you know, look at it as a match. It was It was a really good match. I don't think for one second... Which is interesting because it was non-title. I don't think for one second any fans believed that Nigel was going to win. Somebody on the board compared the uh, what's his is uh, what's the the hold he has the not the Tower of London the uh, London Dungeon. Yes, yes. They compared it to the uh, money clip 
and uh avocado you know what that's actually right you know (laughs) let's see if we can get this move over but it ain't gonna work nobody bought the uh nobody bought that hold I did like, uh, like at the end, I thought it was a very, very good match. The stuff they did at the end was really good. So overall, I would give it a, I would give it a thumbs up. And then, oh, uh, huge, huge thumbs up. Yeah. And then Christian's music hit, comes out on the ramp. It's going to cash in. And son of a bitch, Chris, uh, Kip Sabian. Kip Sabian comes out, steals the briefcase so he can't no, cash in. No, actually, no, Brian. Throw I the must... pen. Yes. It, 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 first he hasn't all, signed the contract. It's not a briefcase, it's a clipboard. Yes. It's a clipboard that opens, but all right, fine. Uh, but he opens it to sign the contract, and Kip Sabian tiptoes up behind him, steals the ballpoint pen out of his hand, and runs away. Do you Is know, he a baby face? Do you know what this reminds me of, Vinny? You know I can't Kip think Sabian of one goddamn thing. Kip Sabian reminds me of not currently, but I'm talking like three months ago. It reminds me of Ridge Holland. Or like they just keep trying, and he never gets over, and nobody cares. And I will say this: I will say this to NXT's credit, they finally got the guy over. They got him over by putting him in a Chase U. The people finally got into Ridge Holland, and then he turned on Chase U, and now they hate him. And his matches are really heated. They finally got over Ridge Holland, so now we're gonna find out. Can they get over Kip Sabian? Because right now, I don't get it. It's not over. I don't know why this is continuing. I don't know what the point is. It's just baffling to me. But that's what happened. Yeah. Kip Sabian stuck him from behind, stole a pen, and ran away. Christian gave chase. Would probably have killed him. Except he ran to Pac and Claudio and fled. So am I to believe then that Pack and Claudio saved Danielson after attacking him two, three weeks ago? I don't know. That was odd. There was I don't know no one what's else. Going on. No other big scary guys to get in Christian's way. How to be Pack and Claudio? All right. All right. I should mention, by the way, that uh, you mentioned the ramp. This is this is Arthur Ashe. It's a it's a it's a large tennis court. Yes, basically. Mm-hmm. And so uh, you know the it's it's different from your your normal you know basketball arena or. NFL stadium or whatever. So that's one of the reasons that the ramp was shorter. But the other thing that I heard about Arthur Ashe was because it is essentially a giant tennis court, the the sound traveled like really weird. Hmm. So, you know, there was a match, the Young Bucks match was incredibly heated. And it felt like the rest of the show there wasn't really a lot of heat. But I was told from people that were there that in fact there was a lot of heat, but because of the way that Arthur Ashe is designed, like it's it's designed for tennis, and so the sound travels differently. And there were people like, you know, I I I talked to someone five feet away and they couldn't hear me. It was just weird. It's weird the way the sound travels in the open air and everything. So anyway, uh, apparently there was a lot of heat on the show. You just couldn't hear most of it. I see. I see. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.